This is time set for a special master hearing in the coordinated cases, the lead case being Wren versus Affinity, case number A 21 831169 B. I'm Floyd Hale, I'm the special master. Uh, please identify yourself and who you represent when you speak. And I did receive a, um, a request for two topics to be covered this morning from Mr. Kemp, but uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The uh, Brown case is, the Hunter Brown case is on a trial setting stack for October 7th. Is that correct? Yes. We don't know if it's going to get the priority on that stack, but it's on that stack. Yeah, even if it does it, there's one case in front of it, which is a car accident case. Oh, so, okay. All right. And then the um, the motion to strike answers for uh, Hannon from Milwaukee, that, that's set for May 9. Is that correct? So uh, why, don't, why don't I, I cover quickly the uh, two items that I was requested to cover this morning, and then Joel, would you let me know what else you want to cover after I get through this? Yeah, sounds good. So the first item, I'm not sure what this issue is, I'll let Mr. Kemp explain it. Silver Springs 2016 insurance policy. We've been asking Silver Springs for their insurance. Um, they uh, are... Uh, one of the defendants named in the Abele case, A-B-E-L-E. -E. And uh, they, they have produced the 2020 policy. And so, starting I think about two months ago, I got all the emails. We asked them to produce the 2016 policy because we thought that was the more pertinent policy. And they have promised us a couple times that they're gonna produce it. And they say they're gonna produce it finally this Friday. I would just like and it doesn't have to be Friday, but some kind of drop dead date that they give us this policy, maybe next Wednesday or a week from Friday. Yeah, you did no, they, they, the carrier ins insures whom? Are they an insure company called Silver Springs? Oh, so Silver, I, I see. Silver Springs is the uh, insured. Right, they're the defendant. Um, and uh, who is their attorney? Their attorneys are Matt Sarnowski, oh. Dennett Winspear, Your Honor. Yeah, and like I said, I don't care if it's Wednesday, next Friday, but I just want to drop dead day so we can put this thing to bed. Matt, how are you doing on getting the policy? I've got the documents in hand because the policy was from 2015. Someone actually had to dive into the records to find the actual materials. They were produced by State Farm uh, within the last week or so. I talked to Miss Switzler of Mr. Kemp's office yesterday, indicated that I, I hope documents will be produced today. If they're not done today, certainly by the end of the week. I believe it's it's taken care of, and I will follow up to make sure that it is. All right, thanks. Just let me know if there's a problem later. And then uh, there was also a request regarding the Terrible Herbs Digital Forensic Examination. Yeah, I just want to tee this up now. I'm not going to ask for ruling. Um, so the status of this is there were some problems in the discovery production in the Hunwardson case involving terrible herbs. Uh, and I, I don't want to go through the whole chronology, uh, but we're asking that we be allowed to go in with our own people and take a look at their computer systems. Uh, yeah, obviously they'll be able to watch what we're doing. And we did a similar procedure with uh, uh, that uh, when she was the discovery commissioner uh, Justice Buell ordered it, so we've attached that. So we've been trying to have, we, we, we sent them a letter about this last week. We've been trying to have a meet and confer on it. And they finally informed us, I think last night or today, that they're getting new counsel and that they think the new counsel should probably pick this up, which is fine with us, but I just want to get this thing teed up. So who, who is their, I don't, they didn't tell us that. Who's their current counsel? Good afternoon, uh, Special Master Hale. This is Kimberly Nelson for Terrible Hearst. Um, new counsel should be substituting, my understanding is, later this afternoon. Uh, it's going to be Gordon Reese. Um, so we're just waiting for that to get finalized, the substitution and filed. 
But as to the uh, meet and confer, the letter was served requesting the meet and confer on Friday. Um, yesterday, Mr. Parker did attempt to call Valerie Rojas, who uh, until substitution of counsel is completed as lead trial counsel, she replied yesterday evening that she saw his calls was unavailable and again alerted him of the substitution of counsel that was forthcoming. Um, so we have been in communication with Mr. Parker as far as trying to get that meet and confer scheduled um, in light of the substitution of counsel. Yeah, we're not trying to quick pitch anybody. We just want to, because, you know, we're starting the uh, uh, luminate hearings next week on the 7th. I'm so sorry, what hearings? The motion luminate hearings. So we kind of want to get this at least, at least, at least discussed with the opposing counsel. All right, so uh, as soon as you see the substitution, I guess we'll move to that okay. attorney. Okay. Uh, who is the individual attorney that's going to be handling it, Kimberly? Uh, if, give me one moment. Uh, it's going to be James Cavanaugh. Why don't you give her a call? As soon as you see the substitute. James, James Kavanaugh? Susie James Kavanaugh. No, no James, James Kavanaugh. Oh, James Kavanaugh. No, call me Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll send him the copy of what we've got so far. So it's okay. Jim Kavanaugh. Okay. Too many Kavanaugh's. He was in this case before. Is he not in the case now? I thought Kavanaugh was in this yeah, case it's before. In, it's since Kavanaugh's in the case now, right? There yeah. were some motions for good faith settlement that I believe were pending. I think those have been resolved at this time, which eliminate any sort of conflict. Again, this was mostly set up through um, lead trial counsel, so I apologize for the lack of information. But my understanding is that any conflicts that did exist no longer do exist, which is why there was a delay in filing the substitution of counsel. Okay, well, we're not saying there's a con conflict. Which one, though? Is this the Kavanaugh we've been dealing with? It is. Yes. Okay. All right, okay. great. All right, just give him a call. Okay, great. And that's all we have. All right. Um, I do have some proposed dates for the Brown schedule. Yeah, I see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the court's got a hearing on October 7th to tell you when it's actually going to go forward, correct? No, that's the trial date. I thought, I thought she was going, well, but in there are issues when it's going to have priority over another trial. Yeah, he's got a hearing on June 12th about the priority. Oh, I didn't realize that. So June 12th is the priority hearing. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, what are your proposed dates? So uh, assuming an October 7th trial day, we proposed August 23rd, close of discovery. Um, June 24th, last day to amend pleadings. Uh, the defendants had requested a July 15th expert disclosure. It, in light of the other dates, we proposed a compromise to, to stagger the expert disclosures so that all experts except medical causation and damages are on June 24th. And then medical causation and damages are this case specific experts are closed or disclosed July 15th. With rebuttal for general experts July 11th, rebuttal for medical causation damages experts July 31st, and all dispositive and pretrial uh, pre motions and women due August 26th. <coughs> remember, we've already done the generic experts for this. We did the deposition for this case. I'm sorry, Ms. Day. What was the date for the motions? July? August 26th. All right, so let me see if I've got those dates correctly. Uh, August 23 is the close of discovery, but the general expert disclosures are June 24. The medical expert disclosures are July 15. The rebuttal experts for general are July 11, and the rebuttal experts for uh, medical are July 31. Correct. Motions August 26th. Yes. Has, has the court set a date for the motions or no? No, no. 
Uh, Floyd, this is Lorene Frister for KE Distributors. Since we just received plaintiff's proposed dates less than an hour ago in an email at 12.22 p.m., I'd like to request that the defense be afforded a couple days at least to um, consider these dates and see if those are going to work with our experts before the special master order them today. Yeah, yeah this was our fault because we should have should have had this on the agenda. Yeah, there was no objection that uh, that was Lorene, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I told them when I emailed these dates that we're willing to work with them on stuff. Right, Joel, do you want to coordinate that or Lorene? Who, who wants to coordinate that with the defense people? Hey, Floyd. Um, Eric was replying to uh, Colt, and Eric sent the email. Um, I've taken a look at the dates. We don't think we're going to have a problem. I think it's just a matter of everybody making sure their experts can meet those deadlines. Um, I'm certainly happy to work with uh, the defense side to make sure if there's somebody who has a problem, they reach out to Eric, but I suspect they'll do that directly. I think, I don't think this is going to be an issue. All right. Just either you or Lorraine or anyone else is welcome to let me know if you reach an impasse. We'll, we'll set up another quick Zoom. Sounds good. This is Lorraine Frister. I'll definitely do that, Lloyd. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your help. Is there, what else do we need to cover? I don't have anything further, Floyd. This is Joel for Real Water. Is there any other, did I miss any other trials that are on schedule? No. Not at the moment, Floyd. There's a question I think everybody has as to when the Cave trial is going to go, but discovery is done in that case. And then the next case after Cave will be the um, Brown Henry Wade case on October 7th. Well, did, did we get a clarification on that other October 7th case? Yeah, that one got bumped. That one's now September 2025. Okay, so that's not a problem anymore. Yep. Well, uh, someone just let me know when you reach an agreement or an impasse on the uh, scheduling for Hunter Brown. Yes. Perfect. Uh, Floyd, this is Lorene Frister again. Uh, I have a, a really quick issue that's not on the agenda. Um, just a clarification on your order regarding uh, producing or disclosing exhibits for a deposition prior to the deposition. Almost all the parties have done a great job of, of filing a notice of potential exhibits before the deposition. There's been one party, Milwaukee Instruments, um, that has been an issue, and I've reached out to meet and confirm with them. We have not reached an agreement, but they are, instead of serving all the parties with the potential exhibits, they're putting them in a folder in HOLO that's not accessible to all parties in the coordinated matters, and they were concerned that they would be violating your order um, if they served the exhibits on all parties. Would you be able to clarify that? Well, aren't they? Are these medical records we're talking about? I don't I know to, because I I've never seen them. Yes. This, this is Don Davis from Milwaukee. And Lorraine, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to meet and confer with you about this issue. It's the first time I've heard of it. But it, our I understanding with your order was that we couldn't just produce medical records willy nilly. That's our concern. Yeah, I think they do have to go into the whole room, don't they? Yeah, well, I think I think the, the fundamental issue is we have to increase the access for everybody in HOLO now that the case has been, you know, is, is that the problem? Well, yes, because I had a meet and confer with Christian Ogata, and I don't know what's in the exhibits, if, if they're only limited to medical records or if they're something else. But if we're attending a deposition or thinking about attending a deposition, we have no idea what the potential exhibits are because we can't access a folder in HOLO. Well, my understanding is for HIPAA concerns, the medicals are screened through HOLO and they release them to the people that are authorized to have access. If right. you're having a problem with that, uh, just let us know. Okay. Well, is it um, plaintiff's contention that the defendants in all the coordinated matters aren't 
entitled to see the notice of potential exhibits if it includes medical records. I just need a clarification on that. Well, because thus far we've seen them. They've, you know, the parties have just been e-serving. If you're in a consolidated case, even if that plaintiff is not suing you in the consolidated case, our position has been to give you access to it. If it's a case, another case, not that consolidated case, and you're not in that case, our position has been there's there's no need for you to have access to it. So does that help? or? It does. It does. And if Milwaukee Instruments can confirm that the exhibits that are not medical records are being served on all the parties in the coordinating matters, that would be good. Yeah, it's just the medical records. We had to set up the separate procedure. Okay. All right. Is all right, thank you. I'm sure that will resolve it. Okay, is there anything else? All right. Um, Joel or Will or Eric or whoever wants to chime in, do you still want another hearing like every two or three weeks? Yeah, I would, at least, at, at least before we get started with the next trial. Yeah, that's fine. Which one's going to trial May 28th? Uh, Rand Carrier. Well, Rand Carrier, uh, Kava. Why is Kava? Question mark on whether Kava will be part of it. Oh, is that right? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a question. Oh, well, there's a Judge Hardy ordered the Kava case for a separate trial, but we filed a motion for reconsideration. So it's unsettled. Oh, that's right. What's going to happen with that? All right. Well, I'll set another hearing in uh, in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. And we'll do it by Zoom. Oh. All right. Is there anything else? Thanks, everyone. You sure timely got into our Zoom.